In typical Datto fashion, whenever I leave to go somewhere or do anything for longer than one day outside of my house, Destiny likes to get really interesting. So, let's talk about some of the things that happened when I was gone. First up, we have this PCGamer.com interview. I would say the number one thing to come out of this interview is that Bungie will be nerfing resilience in Lightfall. Tier 10 resilience is going to give 30% damage reduction instead of 40%, but the curve is going to be a bit smoother in terms of how much damage reduction you get per tier. Right now, I'd say it's really only smart to go into resilience if you plan on getting tier 9 or 10. Maybe 8 is okay, because anything under those tiers is just too costly for the benefit that you get. Tier 10 is 40%, tier 9 is 32%, tier 8 is 26%. It ramps up really high the more you invest. In Lightfall, this curve is not going to be as dramatic, so getting lesser values of resilience isn't going to feel as worthless as it can feel right now. Resilience has been the go-to stat since it received the buff it got this past year because 40% damage reduction, you know, it's a, it, it's a lot. It's a lot of damage reduction. Titans benefited dramatically since resilience is also used for our class ability cooldowns and our class ability is pretty good, especially when combined with Heart of Inmost Light, which has been exotic of the year. I think 30% is a bit more reasonable, and I'm glad to see them flattening the curve out a bit as well to make it maybe feel like you don't need to go all or nothing. That being said, 30% damage reduction is still really high, and only the most experienced players are going to be able to tell the difference between 30 and 40% damage reduction in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. I fully expect Resilience to remain a top-tier stat for Titans unless other things get changed, and I fully expect most players to still invest heavily into Resilience. It's just that now, Tier 7, Tier 8, Tier 9, it's going to be more acceptable, and lower tiers won't give you basically worthless amounts of damage reduction. Good change, reasonable change. The only reason I was surprised this actually happened is because Bungie has just been buffing the crap out of us for the past year, and I did not think they'd actually try to rein us back in. With the slew of changes coming, that is now no longer the case. We might actually have some things go back to being a little difficult in terms of combat. Maybe. Next up, some more random tidbits from the article, like Season 20 having an artifact mod that will let you gain armor charge from picking up fire sprites. Fire sprites being the quote-unquote new version of solar elemental wells. Stat mods are also getting a reduction in energy cost. Uh, what a... Oh, yeah. Okay, so a pretty big thing is related to champion stun effects. In a recent video, I talked about how certain elemental keywords will stun champions, like volatile rounds will have anti-barrier capabilities, slowing an overload champion will stun them, etc. So Bungie goes on to clarify that Weapon effects that have any of these keywords will also be able to stun champions. Examples given were Agger Scepter and Darcy, because Darcy can jolt targets now, but you'll probably just use a weapon Volt Shot. This put people into a frenzy when it came to preparing weapons for Lightfall, and a lot of people have been adding Riptide, the Crucible Stasis Fusion Rifle, into their pre-Lightfall weapon hunt. Riptide can get Chill Clip, which is the overwhelmingly most popular perk on the weapon, and it can get Auto Loading Holster, which synergizes amazingly well with Chill Clip, since Chill Clip only works with the top half of the magazine. Compulsive Reloader is also technically a good choice, since you'll want to be reloading pretty often. But Chill Clip slows on the first hit, which stuns Overload Champions, and then freezes on the second hit, which will stun Unstoppable Champions, allowing you to stun two of three champion types with one gun. Also, Riptide, it's just kind of good. You know, it's, it's pretty good. People have asked about Deliverance as well. As a result, since it's also a stasis fusion, and not only that, it's craftable, and it can be an adept drop since it's from the raid. It's a slower firing fusion at 780 charge time compared to Riptide's faster speeds, but it can roll with Demolitionist, which has become very popular over the past few months for instant reloads. Honestly, I don't think it really matters which one you go for. They're both great choices, and I imagine your pick is going to come down to what activity you have more access to. If you're a raider, you could probably get both quite easily, but if not, well, Riptide it is, right? I would definitely advise trying to get one of these weapons 
for the new era of champions in Lightfall as a just-in-case type deal. Last bits and pieces include the fact that loadouts are per guardian, not account. Love that news. But they will not include your ship, sparrow, emblem, ghost, blah, 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 etc. at release anyway. It might come in the future. We don't know. Okay, so now let's move on to some TWABs and Bungie articles. I covered the TWAB on the 19th, so go check out the No More Blues video for intel on that one. Next, we have the economy updates for Lightfall article. Some of the biggest news to me is no more Umbral Engrams. Umbrals were up there with blues for me, as I never really focus them because I don't wanna, and they clog my inventory. It's a whole deal. I'm absolutely loving this on paper. We'll see how things go in Season 20. Bungie is going to be moving to the system that they have been implementing over the past year, where engrams are going to live on the vendor versus living in your inventory. Next... Ada 1 is going to be selling old school shaders. I'm talking season 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 shaders, old stuff. For 10,000 glimmer each, she's going to sell 3 per week starting in season 20. Also in season 20, Zavala will get the engram system that has been rolling out to the past year to many other vendors. Vanguard engrams will live on Zavala. You can open them directly from the rep track or use them to focus into armor or weapons. You don't need to claim the engram from Zavala to focus it. You just do it straight from the menu. The weapons you'll be able to focus in Season 20 are the xeno class Shotgun, the 3rd Axiom Arc Pulse, Royal Entry Void Rocket, Empty Vessel Solar Special GL, Punching Out Sidearm, I think, Fortissimo, the Slug Shotgun, Strident Whistle, the Solar Bow, Pure Poetry, the I Don't Know, and the Prolonged Engagement, also I Don't Know, with the focusing options <laughs> expanding in future seasons. Pure Poetry is the 120 RPM hand cannon, and Prolonged Engagement is the Stasis SMG. Uh, I'm sure I'll have a great, great video on Vanguard weapon rolls in Season 20. Can't wait for that. Absolute banger! Oh, I'd make one right now, but everyone's just going to forget, and things can change in Season 20 anyway. Zavala is also going to offer Nightfall weapon focusing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm reeling. I'm reeling from the previous. Uh, here are the rules for Nightfall weapon focusing. Nightfall weapons must have been acquired from Nightfall Strikes at least once before you can focus them on Zavala. It's going to cost you one Vanguard Engram, 20,000 Glimmer, and 50 shards. But then it also says 25 shards in the next list. I don't know. In Season 20, those weapons will be Malicious Birthright Kinetic GL, Mindbender's Ambition Solar Shoddy, Wendigo Power GL Hung Jury Scout, the Swarm Void Machine Gun, and Buzzard, the Sidearm. Again, wait for the just absolute banger of a weapon roll video for my advice on those. On top of that, we have Adept Nightfall Ciphers. In addition to the stuff you're getting now, you're also going to get an Adept Nightfall Cipher when doing GM Nightfalls. If you get a gold medal completion, you get one cipher. If you do a platinum, you get two. Silver and lower is gaguts, zero, nada. You can then use those ciphers to focus adept nightfall weapons, but man, is it expensive. Three vanguard engrams, 50,000 glimmer, 50 shards, and count them, 10 ciphers. That is five platinum GMs to focus one adept weapon. Ooh, not sure how I'm feeling about the cost of that at the moment. Does sound pretty expensive, but I guess you mainly want people playing GMs for adept weapons and not having people sit at a vendor just collecting them. We'll see. Zavala will offer the Nightfall Weapon of the Week in terms of the adept focusing. On top of all of this, Bungie will be adding in Legacy Gear Focusing. Tons of old weapons and armor from the past few years of Destiny will be available for legacy focusing. Seven sets of Crucible armor, eight Nightfall weapons, five Vanguard armor sets, two Gambit armor sets, six Iron Banner weapons, five Iron Banner armor sets, five Trials weapons, and two Trials armor sets. Bungie is also going to be bringing back old shaders, emblems, and other cosmetics to end of match rewards. One of the examples they give is Carminica, the Crucible shader. So for anyone who missed those items over the past few seasons now's your chance season 20 will have crucible vanguard gambit and iron banner while trials will have their legacy items released later the cost of these depends on whether or not you've gotten the item before if you have never gotten the item before 
It's going to be pretty expensive. Armor is going to be 3 engrams, 50 shards, and 10,000 glimmer. While weapons are going to cost you 7 engrams, 100 shards, and 10,000 glimmer. If you have gotten an item before, then armor is going to be 1 engram, 25 shards, and 5,000 glimmer. Weapons are going to be 3 engrams, 25 shards, 5,000 glimmer. Trials will have the more expensive costs for both armor and weapons, it appears. Adept versions of basically everything is not going to be available, so don't even try. Finally, we have the list of weapons rotating in and out for Trials, Iron Banner, and Nightfall, coming into Season 20, leaving Season 19, which I'm just going to leave up on the screen, because if you're just listening and not watching the video, there's no way in hell you are paying enough attention to what I'm saying to remember everything that I'm going to say, because there's no way I would remember, and I still have 20-something digits of pi that I remember from a ninth grade competition. 3.14159265358979323846262 is all I remember. This is all great stuff. I know a lot of people are gonna be very happy about being able to get a lot of old stuff from various eras. That's very cool. A lot of legacy stuff is nice for people who just maybe wanna round out collections or get that one piece for fashion purposes. That's cool. Not a lot on my end to contribute here other than just reading the news. I think all of these are pretty well accepted bits of information that don't need too much extra explanation, so I'm, I'm just going to spare you from that. Some more good news for people who need some help getting weapon crafting patterns unlocked. Bungie has made it so weekly deep sight weapon focusing from season 16, 17, 18 vendors will now be daily for the rest of the season starting on the 31st. You can now get one per day instead of one per week. You're still going to need all the materials for those red borders. That's going to be pretty time consuming, but for those of you with that extra time to grind, this should be a big help. Finally, looks like Destiny had some issues recently where Bungie had to do a rollback of the servers because they used an old state migration process used for Beyond Light, which caused a loss of triumphs and titles and progression for a lot of people. If I'm understanding this correctly, which I'm probably not, it kind of seems like they accidentally rolled back everyone's data to their Beyond Light data. The game went down for almost a full day. It seems like things are getting back to normal now, if not completely back to normal. While this tech issue does appear to be a more one-off event, it has gotten the community discussing the state of the game from a more technical sense, as there has been an uptick in server issues, API going down, etc. And all I really have to say on this is that I hope Bungie is continually trying to improve the stability of the game. That seems pretty implied. No one's really on the other side of this issue. Everyone wants the game to be more stable, but that's really the only feedback we're capable of giving. Make a game more stable. The rest is just on Bungie to keep improving the game, which I imagine is an ongoing process basically all of the time, but there's no amount of me being like, eh, make the servers good that's going to, like, change anything. You know what I mean? I think that basically covers everything when I was gone. Pretty good stuff here for the most part. As I said in previous videos, build videos are going to be on hold until Lightfall as things are changing so much that by the time a video would come out on a build, it's going to be irrelevant since we're going to have the new system. I imagine a lot of similar type videos will suffer the same fate. With so much changing in Lightfall... Not really a point to discuss how things are right now when it's just going to be irrelevant in, oh my god, less than a month. That's it. I'll let you go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.